えー、皆さんおはようございます。バイリンガルハルキストのマサトニックです。えー、Good morning, guys. I'm マサトニック。あん、いつます。あんマサトニック、バイリンガルハルキスト。<笑>えっと、2020年10月15日木曜日ということで、今日も朝活やっていきたいと思うんですが、の朝活誌の前にですね、ちょっとあの、新しいブックガイドの動画を1本撮ってまして、なんかあの、朝活もあるんで、まあ、クイックに10分ぐらいで喋って、どうかなと思っていたら、気がついたら40分喋っていて、その準備作業も含めるとなんか1時間ぐらいになっていて、今慌てて朝ごはんを食べて朝活を開始しようとしているところでございます。えー、それでは本日も張り切ってまいります。張り切ってゆるりと参りましょう。ジョン・ルイス社として死活なくなった公民権運動活動家、下院議員、同志はキング牧師だったともに1965年3月のセルマ大公所に引いた。ルイス氏はエドマンド・ペタス・マスに到達したところで、町区でいた警察官らに暴行系、頭蓋骨骨折の受賞だ。もうちの日曜日事件をきっかけに公民権運動への支持が高まり、同年8月、投票権法が推出するに至った。コーチという何をすることを求める呼びかけ。リネーム A for B、A を B にちなんで解明する。エドマンド・ペタス・ブリッジ、エドマンド・ペタス・バシ。ペティション、請願書、探案書、call on to do、何々何することを求める要求する、beat、何々にオーダーする、叩く、all those years ago、何年も前の投資に、propose that do、何々何々することを提案する、by the way、ちなみにところで、confederate、アメリカの北戦争時の南軍の南部連合の、brigadier general、巡将、the KKK、the Ku Klux Klan、Ku Klux Klan、白人史上主義の秘密組織、sign、署名する、And support to do, 何をすることを指示して、White Supremacist、白人至上主義者。Number six, <coughs> call Lena Bridge for John Lewis. <coughs> There was a video like there, the aunt Edmund Paris Bridge. There's a petition now that called the aunt Alabama Governor's the Lena Bridge, the, the newest all those years ago. It proposes that it called the John Lewis Bridge, Edmund Paris, by the way, with a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader, KKK. More than 40,000, 50, Have signed the support to make a change. Number six, call to rename bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There is a petition now called Calling Alabama's Governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was being on those years ago. 
It proposes that it's called the John Lewis Bridge, Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename a bridge by John Lewis. There was a video right there of the Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There was a petition now to call, or calling Alabama's government to rename the bridge where Lewis was being all those years ago. It proposed the epic called John Lewis Bridge, Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader of the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename bridge for John Lewis. There's a video right there of the Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There was a petition now to call the Alabama's governor to rename the bridge, remove it all those years ago. It proposed a uh, COVID John Lewis Bridge, Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader of the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename a bridge bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of the Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There was a petition now to call, calling on the Alabama's government to rename the bridge where Lewis was being all those years ago. It proposed that it because John Lewis Bridge, Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader in KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed support to the mixed change. Number six, call the rename bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There's a petition now to call on Alabama's governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was built all those years ago. It supported it called the John Lewis Bridge. Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and a leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of Lewis on the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There is a petition now calling on Alabama's governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was beaten all those years ago. It proposed it called the John Lewis Bridge. Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and the leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call the rename bridge for John Lewis. There's a video right there of Lewis on the, Ed the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There is a petition now to calling on Alabama's governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was beaten all those years ago. It proposed it called the John Lewis Bridge. Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and a leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of Lewis on the Edmund, the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There is a petition now to call on Alabama's governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was beaten all those years ago. It, support, it proposed to call John Lewis Bridge. Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and a leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed in support to make the change. Number six, call to rename bridge for John Lewis. There was a video right there of Lewis on the, Edm the Edmund Pettis Bridge. There is a petition now to calling on Alabama's governor to rename the bridge where Lewis was beaten all those years ago. It proposes it be called John Lewis Bridge. Edmund Pettis, by the way, was a Confederate Brigadier General and a leader in the KKK. More than 450,000 people have signed a support to make the change.
The literary green monster. My husband left for work as usual, and I couldn't think of anything to do. I sat alone in the chair by the window, staring out at the garden through the gap between the curtains. Not that I had any reason to be looking at the garden. There was nothing else for me to do, and I thought that sooner or later, if I sat there looking, I might think of something. Of all the many things in the garden, the one I looked at the most was the oak tree. It was my special favorite. I had planted it when I was a little girl and watched it grow. I thought of it as my old friend. I talked to it all the time in my head. That day too, I was probably talking to the oak tree. I don't remember what about, and I don't know how long I was sitting there. The time, slip, the time slips by, and I'm looking at the garden. It was dark before I knew it. I must have been there quite a while. Then, all at once, I heard a sound. It came from somewhere far away, a funny, muffled sort of rubbing sort of sound. At first, I thought it was coming from a place deep inside me, that I was hearing things, a warning from the dark, dark cock my body was spinning within. I held my breath and listened. Yes, no doubt about it. Little by little, the sound was moving closer to me. What was it? I had no idea, but it made my flesh creep. The ground near the base of the tree began to bulge upward as if some thick, heavy liquid were rising to the surface. Again, I caught my breath. Then the ground broke open, and the mounted earth crumbled away of liberal set with sharp claws. My eyes locked onto them, and my hands turned into clenched fists. Something's going to happen, I said to myself. It's starting now. The crowd scraped hard at the soil, and soon the break in the earth was an open hole. From fits there crawled a little green monster. Its body was covered with shining green scales. As soon as it emerged from the hole, it shook itself, and the bits of soil clinging to it dropped away. It had a long, funny nose. The green fish gradually deepened towards the tip. The very end was narrow and pointed as a whip, but the beast's eyes were exactly like a human's. The sight with them sent a shiver through me. They showed feelings just like your eyes or mine. The little gray monster. My husband for work as you when my my husband left for work as usual, and I couldn't think of anything to do. I sat alone in in the chair by the window, staring out at the garden through the gap between the curtains. Not that I had any reason to be looking at the garden. There was nothing else for me to do. And I thought that sooner or later, if I sat there looking, I must think of something. Of all the many things in the garden, the one I looked at the most was the oak tree. It was my special favorite. I had planted it when I was a little girl and watched it grow. I thought of it as my old friend. I talked to it all the time in my head. That day too, I was probably talking to the oak tree. I don't remember what about and I don't know how long I was sitting there. The time slips by when I'm looking at the garden. It was dark before I knew it. I must have been, I must have been there quite a while. Then, all at once, I learned, I heard a sound. It came from somewhere far away, a funny muffled sort of rubbing sort of sound. At first, I thought, I thought it was coming from a place deep inside me, that I was hearing things, a warning from the dark cock my body was spinning within. I held my breath and listened. Yes, no doubt about it. Little by little, the sound was moving closer to me. What was it? I had no idea, but it made my flesh, flesh creep. The, the ground near the base of the tree began to bulge upward as if some thick, heavy liquid were rising, rising to the surface. Again, I caught my breath, then the ground broke open, and the mounted earth crumbled away to reveal a set of sharp clothes. My eyes looked onto them, and my hands turned into cl clenched fists. Something's going to happen. I said to myself, it's starting now. The clothes scraped hard at the soil, and soon the break in the earth was an open hole from which there, from which there crawled a little green monster. Its body was covered with shining green scales. As soon as it emerged from the hole, it shook itself and the bits of soil clinging to it dropped away. It had a long, funny nose. The green of which gradually deepened towards the tip. The very end was narrow and pointed as a whip. But the, uh, but the beast's eyes were exactly like a human's. The sight of them sent a shiver through me. They showed, they showed feelings just like your eyes or mine. The little green monster. My husband left for work as usual, and I couldn't think of anything to do. I sat alone in the chair by the window, staring out at the garden through the, through the gap between the curtains. Not that I had any reason to be looking at the garden. There was nothing else for me to do. And I thought, I thought that sooner or later, if I sat there looking, I might think of something, of all the many things in the garden.
The one I looked the most was the oak tree. It was my special favorite. I had planted it when I was a little girl and watched it grow. I thought of it as my old friend. I talked it all the time in my head. That day too, I was probably talking to the oak tree. I don't remember what about, and I don't know how long I was sitting there. The time slips by when I'm looking at the garden. It was dark before I knew it. I must have been there quite a while. Then all at once, I heard a sound. It came from somewhere far away. A funny, muffled, sort of rubbing sort of sound. At first, I thought, I thought it was coming from a place deep inside me, that I was hearing things, a warning from the dark cocoon. My body was spinning within. I held my breast and listened. Yes, no doubt about it. Little by little, the sound was moving closer to me. What was it? I had no idea. Uh, but it made my flesh creep. The sound near the base of the tree began to bulge upward, as if some thick, heavy liquid were rising to the surface. Again, I caught my breath. Then the ground broke open and the mounted earth crumbled away. They revealed a set of sharp claws. My eyes locked onto them, and my hands turned into clenched fists. Something's going to happen, I said to myself. It's starting now. The claws sc scraped hard at the soil, and soon the break in the earth was an open hole, from which there crawled a little green monster. Its body was covered with shining green scales. As soon as it emerged from the hole, it shook itself until the bits of soil clinging to it dropped away. It had a long, funny nose. The green of which gradually deepened towards the tip. The very end was narrow and pointed as a whip. But the beast's eyes were exactly like a human's. The sight of them sent a shiver through me. They issued feelings just like your eyes or mine. The little green monster. My husband left for work as usual, and I couldn't think of anything to do. I sat alone in the chair by the window, staring out at the garden through the gap between the curtains. Not that I had any reason to be looking at the garden. There was nothing else for me to do. And I thought that sooner or later, if I sat there looking, I might think of something, of all the many things in the garden. The one I looked at the most was the oak tree. It was my special favorite. I had planted it when I was a little girl and watched it grow. I thought of it as my old friend. I talked it all the time in my head. That day too, I was probably talking to the oak tree. I don't remember what about and I don't know how long I was sitting there. The time slips by when I'm looking at the garden. It was dark, it was dark before I knew it. I must have been there quite a while. Then all at once, I heard a sound. It came from somewhere far away, a funny muffled sort of rubbing sort of sound. At first, I thought it was coming from a, a place deep inside me that I was hearing things. <clears throat> a warning from the dark cocoon my body was spinning within. I held my breath and listened, yes, no doubt about it, little by little, the sound was moving closer to me. What was it? I had no idea. But it made my flesh creep. The ground, the ground near the base of the tree began to bulge upward, as if some thick, heavy liquid were rising, rising to the surface. Again, I caught my breath. Then the ground bro broke open, and the mounted earth crumbled away to leave it a set of sharp claws. <clears throat> My eyes looked onto them, and my hands turned into clenched fists. Something's going to happen, I said to myself. It's starting now. The clothes scraped hard at the soil, and soon the break in the earth was an open hole. From which there flowed a little green monster. Its, pro its body was covered with shining green scales. As soon as it emerged from the hole, it shook itself until the bits of soil clinging to it dropped away. <clears throat> It had a long, funny nose, the green of which gradually deepened towards the tip. The very end was narrow and pointed as a whip. But the beast's eyes were exactly like a human's. The sight of them sent a shiver through me. They, they showed feelings just like your eyes or mine. The little green monster. My, my husband left for work as usual, and I couldn't think of anything to do. I sat alone in the chair by the window staring out at the garden through the gap within the curtains. Not that, I, not that I had any reason to be looking at the garden. There's, not, there's nothing else for me to do. And I thought that sooner or later, if I sat there looking, I might think of something. Of all the many things in the garden, the one I looked at the most was the oak tree. It was my special favorite. I had planted it when I was a little girl and watched it grow. I thought of it as my old friend. I talked it all the time in my head. That day too, I was probably talking to the oak tree. I don't remember what about, and I don't know how long I was sitting there.
the time slips by. When I'm looking at the garden, it was dark before I knew it. I must have been there quite a while. Then all at once, I heard a sound. It came from somewhere far away, a funny muffled sort of loving sort of sound. At first, I, I thought it was coming from a place deep inside me, that I was hearing things, a warning from the dark cocoon. My body was spinning within. I held my breath and listened. Yes, no doubt about it. Little by little, the sound was moving closer to me. What was it? I had no idea. But it made my flesh creep. The ground near the base of the tree began to bulge upward as if some thick, heavy liquid were rising to the surface. Again, I caught my breath. Then the ground broke open and the mounded earth crumbled away to liberate a set of sharp claws. My eyes looked onto them and my, my hands turned into clenched fists. Something is going to happen. I said to myself, it's starting now. The claws scraped hard at the soil and soon the break in the earth was an open hole from which there crawled a little green monster. Its body was, its body was covered with shining green, shining green scales. As soon as it emerged from the hole, it shook itself until the bits of soil clinging to it dropped away. It had a long, funny nose, the green of which gradually deepened toward the tip. The very end was narrow and pointed as a whip. But the beast's eyes were exactly like a human's. The sight of them sent a shiver through me. They showed feelings just like your eyes or mine. She, she carefully cuddled the, cuddled the we, uh, we chap for, for she was awfully fond of children, so patient with the little sufferers and uh, Tommy Caffrey could never, never be got, never be got to take his caster, <coughs> cast, caster, be bako, caster, or unless it was she, 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 she carefully that held his nose and promised him the scatty hill of the loaf or brown bread with golden syrup on. What a per persuasive power that the girl had. But to be sure, baby, baby Bodman was as good as gold, a perfect little dot, little dot in, in his new, new fancy bib. None, no, none of your spoiled beauties. Flora McFringe's thought was Sissy Caffrey. A truer hearted, le less never do, never drew the breath of life, always with a laugh in his gypsy like eyes and a floricsome word on, on her ch cherry ripe, cherry ripe red lips. A girl lo lovable in the extreme, and Eddie Boardman laughed to laugh to at the qu qu quaint language of <clears throat> little brother. But just then there was a slight altercation between Master Tommy and Master Jackie. Boys will, will be boys, and our, our two twins were no, no exception due to this golden rule. The upper of this court was a certain castle of sand, which Master Jackie had built, had built and Master Tommy would, would have it right to do wrong, that, that it was to be uh, architect, architecturally improved by a, by a front door like the the Martello towel had, but if Master Tommy was um, had to strong Master Jackie, but self self too, and true to true to Maxim that every 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 little Irishman's house is is his castle. He he fell upon his hated rival and to such a purpose that the, uh, would be would be a silent a silent quite a silent. Came to came to grief and and alas to relate the the coveted castle too. Needless to say, the cities of this discomfited Master Tommy drew the attention of the girl friends. Come here, Tommy, his sister called him imperatively at once, and you, Jackie, for for shame to slow slow poor Tommy in the dirty stand. I wait till I catch you, I catch you, father. His eyes mist, misty with. Uh, Ashed tears, 
Master Tommy came came at her call for the big sister's word was low low with the twins, and in a, in a sad plight, he was too he was too after his misadventure. His literal man of war top top and un, unmentionable were full of sand. But Shishi was a past mistress, and the art was smoothing over life's life's tiny troubles, and very quickly. Not not one speck of sand was to be seen on his on his smart little suit. <clears throat> Still, the, the blue eyes were glistening with hot tears that doubt well well up. So so she kissed away the harshness and shook her head at the Master Jackie, the culprit, and said, "If she was near near him, she wouldn't be wouldn't be far from him." Her eyes dancing in uh, uh, admonition. Nasty, nasty, bored Jackie. She cried. She put an uh, arm around the little, little Marina and coaxed winningly. What's your name? Butter and cream. Tell us who is your sweetheart. Spoke, spoke Eddie Boardman. Is she, she your sweetheart? Now, a tearful Tommy said, "Is Eddie Boardman your sweetheart?" She, she queried. Now, Tommy said, "I know Eddie Boardman." Said a nun to Amiabri with an arc glance. From her short-sighted short eyes, I know who is Tommy's sweetheart. Garty is Tommy's sweetheart. Now Tommy sits on the barge of tears. She is a quick, quick Martha with guest. Guest, what was amiss? And she whispered to Eddie Boardman to make to to take me there behind the push car, where the gentle, gentleman couldn't see and to mind he didn't wet his new new tan shoes, but. Who was Getty? Who was Gotti? Hi. Oh, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.増えていただいたようですが、まあ、ちょうどですね、あの、ユリシーズの音読も終わりまして、今日の朝活のメニュー終了という形となります。えっ、ー、と、今日この後仕事始まる前にうまく時間作れれば、えっ、ー、と、さっきこの朝活の前に撮った、えー、カーソンマッカラーズの心は孤独な狩人の、えー、ルックガイドの動画をささっと、えっ、ー、と、編集っていうことの編集はないんですけども、ささっとまとめて動画アップできればなと思っております。それでは皆さん、えー、本日も張り切って、あるいはゆるりと参りましょう。See you tomorrow. Bye and have a nice day.